Correct. We're out here in the town of Chase. Jane and her husband did an unbelievable job at putting this thing together. Now, you were the one that first uncovered this entire story. I am a junk collector. I love old windows, old doors, antiques, and I scavenger all over Craigslist trying to find them. And a couple years ago, I came across this lady who had a shed sale, and she had so much cool stuff in there, and I programmed her in my phone as Barn Lady. <laughs> and I never really thought I'd ever hear from her again, and every couple weeks or months, I would send her a text and come on out and grab something, and got to know her, and then when John suggested this uh, story, this little this show, TV show thingy, he, uh, I, she was the first person, I said, you gotta call Barn Lady. Yep. So he called Barn Lady, and fast forward, here we are. Yep, here we are, and we're gonna take a look exactly at how this all came about. For over 100 years, it had been a picture-perfect farm in the town of Chase. But when serious farmers moved out, new residents who showed neither respect for the heritage nor concern for the upkeep moved in, turning a once proud piece of local history into an eyesore. Um, the neighbors, in fact, filled me in a lot. They were the ones that lived with it for a long time in disarray, chaos. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the junk, a lot of the um, disrepair that happened made them more sad than me. They lived with it longer and had to look at it longer than me. In 2013, Jane and her husband Fred decided to buy the property and begin the long process of trying to restore it to its former luster. Step one, remove the squalor. In here, there was probably two semi-loads of garbage. Um, like I said, personal belongings, pictures, medicine, clothing, food. Not fun to go through people's items like that, not fun at all. What kept them going through the darkest days? I think support from great friends, select family, mom and dad, saying if anybody can do it, you and Fred can do it, and it had potential. Um, look around, how can you not save it? So I think keeping us going said potential, potential, potential. Once they got to the bones of the structure, they knew they were on their way. Um, an architect had walked through the barn and said, you would be crazy not to save this barn. It's, it's structurally very sound. Everything that you see in here is original, um, just cleaned up. Um, the original pulley up in the hayloft, the hay um, system, the hay hook, the pulleys are all still there. Whoever hung them last, that's where they've laid. Um, the beams, everything you see, the ladders, the beams, everything's original. I have a friend that does a lot with woodworking and said they're white oak and the older they get, the stronger they get. So they really are like cement. They are really hard to put anything into it to hang or to nail or to screw. They, they are made to last um, for, like I said, probably another hundred years. Also original, the title. Well, this has been just really interesting to look through this dating back to 1890. Very interesting. And beautiful writing and History in my hands. This is history in your hands right here. Maybe it takes a former farmer to accept a challenge like this. Growing up in a farm wasn't fun. Um, taught me a lot of great work ethics and I am proud to be a farmer's daughter. With that background, an appreciation for symbols of a pioneer way of life that are slipping away. I can drive past a barn um, one week and the next week it's down. It makes me sad. I get out of my car actually, I take pictures of old barns. The silo outside we were going to take down and my dad had a good point. Silos are going to be a thing of the past probably also one day. Why not keep it? So the silo is going to stay, the corn crib outside is going to stay. A lot of people don't even know what a corn crib is. So to save it is kind of cool to show people what it is. The reward? You know, to sit in here and find peace and solace and happiness, friendship. We've brought the community together. We've brought the neighborhood together. Neighbors are proud now of this property. They can't believe what we've done with it. We're not heroes. We just saw potential and said we have to save it. We both went through a lot, but it turned out nice, it looks nice, and the neighborhood looks nicer now, and everybody likes it. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> it's good on the farm. I absolutely adored that. How <laughs> sweet are those two? Seriously. Just gives me goosebumps. As you guys notice, we have Barn Lady with us, a.k.a. Jane Nowak. So Jane, what did you think about this whole process? <sighs> it was a process, right? We call it beautification process. Uh, we did it for us, of course. We're not part of this history of this place, this property, this barn, the homestead. Um, we did it for the neighbors. We did it for the community. We did it for fun. We did it because the agricultural landscape is changing, and we wanted to save it just because um, we had to. We just, in our hearts, we knew that we had to save it for whatever reason, and it's turned out to be the best reason of all has been fun and bringing community together. And as you said before, it's not like we've got the coolest barn in all of Wisconsin or northeast, northeast Wisconsin or whatever. 
It's just the most special barn to you guys. Absolutely. Our barn is special to us, just like someone else's barn is special to them, or their old house is special to them. To them. People collect cars. Um, those cars are special to them. So again, no, we're not saying we have the best barn in the world by all means, but it is our special place that we gather, and now we're part of its history, and it could make me happier. Awesome. So when you say it's good on the farm, what does that mean to you? Well, um, life has stresses, as we all know, and when you come home and see little kittens playing by you, you can have a glass of wine and watch the sunset by the corn crib. You can come in the barn to the stereo one, dance or work out and have a neighbor walk over and share a glass of wine and talk. To me, it's that's life on the farm. The hardships are gone, the cows are gone, the feed is gone, and what's left is echoes of memories and people's voices and history that I've learned over the, the past couple years. Um, so us, life is good on the farm. I come home and I de-stress and we find peace and solace here. One last thing, who are some of the people you want to thank? Absolutely, my parents uh, for giving us encouragement and saying we could do it. They want us to do it. They're proud of us, I hope. <laughs> um, our children, of course, and our new grandson's going to be part of this. We can't wait to bring him up here and have him have fun and learn how to dance and hang out with his in-laws and his neighbors and his friends. Well, that's where I'm going to learn how to dance and have some of that wine down by the old corn crib. And I'll join you. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for the hospitality out here. You're welcome. It's this been is a pleasure. Awesome. It's been a Thank pleasure, Thank you so you much for your time. You're welcome. When we come back, we'll meet a gentleman who takes some old wood, and I'll tell you what, he gives it new life. That's coming up next. Hands-On Wisconsin continues.